we once had a perfectly beautiful horse who ran in all the major races, made some records in some of them, had an occasional defeat, but basically was considered the finest horse of his racing year. The story of Secretariat is the story of a horse and the people around him who went beyond what anyone expected. Secretary, horse of the year. Great sports story is always, for the most part, an underdog story. And with this great horse, that element doesn't exist as much. But certainly the horse had its own issues to get over before the Triple Crown. But it's the story of Penny and her overcoming odds, coming into a man's world and succeeding. Miss Jennery? This story surprises you with what the woman could do who owned him, the man who trained him, the man who rode him, the groom who took care of him. All of those people went beyond what anybody thought was possible. The Secretariat did something that no one thought was even conceivable. Secretariat was not your average horse. It's always nice to see someone get close to perfection. The dude was such the dude. I mean, the horse was so incredible at what it did, and that was run. They move on to the back stretch. That's Secretariat now up to challenge. There goes Secretariat on the outside getting the lead. Secretariat is moving up on the outside and moving at the leader as they come for the head of the stretch. There goes Secretariat, boldly moving through between horses, getting the lead by three parts of a length. Secretariat on the rail, now up to challenge for the lead. Drive for stride, head and head down the stretch they come. Four of them across the track with an eighth of a mile to the finish. Secretariat getting the lead. It's Secretariat. Secretariat in front. Penny, she knew that there was not just speed, but stamina in, in the bloodline of the Secretariat. She had the wisdom to have hope and faith that that little colt might actually go further. <laughs> and of course it did. You really have to have a product you believe in and the determination that you can do it. And by God, I was going to do that. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people around the horse really sense something very special early on. You know, that first race when he lost, I think not so many people know there was a great expectation. They were very surprised that he came in fourth because around the workouts, around the barn, they knew he was special. I started riding him three months before he ran his first race. The first time I put my saddle on him and galloped him around, he was a little bit hard pulling horse. Eventually, he got going real nice. After the first few times, I started working him. My told Lucian Lauren, I said, you got a racehorse in your hand. One of the most remarkable things about Secretary is that not only did he have phenomenal natural ability, anatomically, he was almost without flaw. You couldn't pick him apart. He was a specimen. I mean, they called him Super Horse, or the horse that God built, or the perfect horse. He has the kind of build when, when he would walk into the racetrack, he could blow himself up so he would seem infinitely larger than the other horses. He had a great golden coat, which looked like about a half a size too small, had bulging muscles, good looking head, great jowl, deep, big, gorgeous shoulder. You can feel all the muscle in him, and he glide. Just like a plane took off off the ground. You never just pulled out the red horse. If a camera or the press were around, he knew it. And he was aware of his sight lines and camera lights. First click of the camera, the ears would go up. He'd swell up and pose, you know, like, look at me. I'm the man. I mean, and, and he was, and he knew it. He put on a show. He played around a lot. One day there with the Eddie Sweat, he grabbed the rake and tried to pull the rake into this to the stall. And he had it halfway in, and Eddie grabbed the rake and they were having a little bit of a tug of war there. And another time he did grab one of Eddie's brushes and ran to the back of the stall with it. And uh, Eddie said, Come back here, you dude, and give me my back my brush. And the secretary, you know. Well, he was really cute doing that. He was not a horse. He was a human being to me. If he could have talked, oh, man, oh, man, he would have just tell you what he wanted to do, how he could have do it, and when he wanted to do it. Charlie was telling me after he lost one of his few races that he did lose, Secretary knew it and was mad about it, but he said, you know what? Charlie said, I always thought that he thought about it. Every time he get beat, he get in the back of the stall. He don't want to be bothered. He's, he, that he be thinking. I said, what do you be thinking about? Every time he get beat, he come back. He in his next race, that he set a record. Sure enough, every next time he ran, he did break the track record. That's a fact. And they're off. 
lo and behold, he lost the Wood Memorial on the eve of the Kentucky Derby, which ultimately was the greatest thing that ever happened. And plus, there was a real good horse out there named Sham. And I thought, you know, I just don't know if he can beat Sham. I have to admit that coming up to the Kentucky Derby and Newsday, I picked Secretary to finish third. On the day of the Derby, the horse leaves the gate. And they're off. He's dead last. On the inside, that's Angolite for the lead. On the outside, Shecky Green. He starts circling the field slowly around the first turn. On the outside, Navo, followed by Secretariat, Warba, finally twice a prince. Down the back stretch and around the far turn, he's moved up and he's flying on the outside. You can see those white and blue silks. And I'm thinking, man, he's back. Secretariat is fourth and moving up on the outside and is now third and moving at the leaders as they come for the head of the stretch. When he started picking up horses, and when you took it home and, and run it, I said, well, you got this one. They're at the head of the stretch, and Sham is the leader. He leads it by a length. We hook Sham, and they run head and head together, and we're all screaming up in the press box. The place was delirious. Now and then the stretch, it's Secretariat. Sham holding in second. It's Secretariat moving away. He has it by two and a half. And then he pulls away to win the fastest Kentucky Derby in history, 159 and two. And the remarkable thing he did that day is he ran every quarter mile in that derby faster than the preceding quarter. He literally went faster and faster throughout the Kentucky Derby. He was going 36 miles an hour past the stands the first time and 39 miles an hour going past the stands the second time. The fact that Secretariat would always be at the back and enjoyed the experience of passing everybody, that was something to behold. Secretariat bobs his head. We're still looking and they're off. The early lead, that deadly dream on the outside, a Coley Taj. Then it's also Torsion on the outside. As they pass the stands, the Secretariat is last again. Into the first turn, he was last, circled the field, and by the time they came out of the turn, he was in front of the whole field. That's the way the horse ran. He came in from behind, and boom. Sham under an easy hold right now, but here comes Secretariat. He's moving fast, and he's going to the outside. He's going for the lead, and it's right now he's looking for it. Roddy Turcotte sends him alongside Ecole Taj. Here we have it. Ecole Taj is the leader, but Sham, rather, Secretariat is right alongside. He's in the Preakness. I ain't never seen him jump and take off that fast. He just make one, one leap and said, take me to the outside. He said, let's ride. There's no words. It's something magical when Secretariat turned it on. You're just awestruck at what he could decide to do. Here comes Sham, second on the outside now. Now it's Secretariat, the leader by a length and a half, with Sham moving into second. Sham, that was the horse to beat. The horse was great, but he just met something greater. They're on the turn, and here's the race, folks. Secretariat trying to hold it, and Sham is driving to get him. He expected to win. He had taken his career entirely into his own hands. Head of the stretch, Secretariat, two and a half. Sham under a strong left-handed whip, and he's making it run now, but it's still Secretariat holding on. He loved to run. He just picked his legs up and just went out and, and grabbed the, the earth and just kept running. Powerful horse. But Ronnie Turcott has his whip put away, and Secretariat has him put away. He's beginning to draw away. It is Secretariat. He's coming to the wire. He wins the tie, two and a half, almost three. Secretariat won the first two races in record time. It wasn't just that he won them. He won them faster than any other horse had ever run them. When he won the Derby in track record time, it got everybody's attention. Then when he duplicated that performance in the Preakness, it was like, wow, look at here. And then leading up to the Belmont, I think he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated and Time and Newsweek. And you just hoped and prayed that he wouldn't stub his toe because, you know, it was just such a great story. Let this go on and be completed. And then for him to go on and do what he did in the Belmont, just it, it was... It was jaw-dropping. It truly was. And so we come up to the day of the Belmont. Sun's just coming up. A little pony girl was taking care of her pony, and she rattled a bucket on the wall, and Secretary heard that, and he went up in the air, and he started walking around. He was pawing at the sky like this. And he comes down, and he's now he's dancing. He's on like a dressage horse on springs. And his nostrils are flared, and his eyes are big and round, and he's snorting. He literally pranced into his stall, and I thought to myself, oh my God, what are we going to see out there today? Sham now going in. He's the outside horse, and we're ready to go for this tremendous Belmont stick. Everybody's in line, and they're off. Looks like the early lead goes to Mike Gallant. Yes, Mike Gallant going for the lead with Price the Prince on the outside. Secretary to weigh very well, has good position on the rail, and in fact is now going up with the leader. When they broke, and Secretary didn't hang back, and he 
moved right along from his inside post. And then Sham engaged him, and Sham even edged ahead. Part of me thought, well, Sham, you've been a gallant horse. If you can do this, I'm all for you. Those two together, Sham on the outside. Sham getting ahead in front as they move around the turn with Secretary at second. Then there's a large gap, make it eight lengths. Anyone who was familiar with horse racing said, what are they doing? They're cooking each other. I mean, neither one of them can win this. They're on the back stretch. It's almost a match race now. Secretariat's on the inside, by ahead. Sham is on the outside. It's kind of tragic to me to think about Sham. He's the only contender up until the moment when Secretary just decided to defy belief. They're moving on the turn now. For the turn at Secretariat. It looks like he's opening. The lead is increasing. Make it three, three and a half. He's moving into the turn. Secretariat holding on to a large lead. I remember thinking, oh no, he's going too fast. Secretariat is blazing along. The first three quarters of a mile in 109 and four fifths. Three quarters and 109. There's champion horses today who sprint that have trouble going that fast just running a six furlong race, much less to do that and then still keep going for another three quarters of a mile. I mean, it's just, it's just unreal. Secretariat is widening now. He is moving like a tremendous machine. Secretariat by 12. Secretariat by 14 lengths on the turn. He's out there almost a sixteenth of a mile away from the rest of the horses. When he shook off the other horses and was clearly in the lead, that's when it got surreal. Secretariat is in a position that is impossible to get. He said, I have won your race. Now I'm going to show you what I can do on a mile and a half track. He's into the stretch. Secretariat leads his field by 18 lengths. And now twice a prince has taken second. And Mike Ballard has moved back to third. They're in the stretch. Secretariat has opened a 22 length lead. He is going to be the triple crown winner. He kept picking up speed and he hit the finish line 31 lengths ahead of all the other horses. It's almost impossible to believe. To be on the horse when it's doing that, I, I, I just, to be one with Secretariat in that moment of history, Ronnie Turcotte was elevated to the status of first man on the moon. It's that archetypally untouchable. That race was really sort of supernatural. That horse was doing something that horses just can't do. He's left a mark as a legend. Since I was a kid and since he had ran, all we talk about is Secretariat. You know, if a big horse wins a race, it's like, well, he's not as good as Secretariat. There's never been any horse that could even warm Secretariat up as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I've seen some really good horses since then, but none like him. With each passing running of the Triple Crown, you realize more and more how special he was. Unfortunately, nobody lives forever, and in his autopsy, of course, it was found. His heart, of course, metaphorically, was twice the size, but biologically. They found that his heart was well over twice as big as any horse's heart they'd ever seen, which is a kind of fitting metaphor for him. After he died, I made a mission to try and keep his legacy alive because he was such a, a, an outstanding horse. And I really just care for my horse so much that I've just kept honking his horn. And the great thing about us getting to make movies is that we get to make Secretariat in some ways live on. Secretariat will be remembered for generations. He's immortal now. There were so many emotions bringing this story to the screen, and I think the most touching one, the one that will linger in my heart the most, is that Penny could be there. It's just amazing to me that Penny could enjoy this. The common reaction is, is to love what he did, which we couldn't have forced or created for him. He just picked his moment and just ran because he was loving it.